Welcome to Drunk Bible Study. This show's mission is to read every single word of the greatest story ever told. A warning to our listeners, the hosts of this show are sinners, but they're doing their best. There will be drinking and there may be some swears. They did say they'd try to keep it clean, but I wouldn't put my money on it. I'm Emily, and this is Drunk Bible Study, where my good friends Dedeker and Jace teach me, a born and raised atheist, all about the Bible. So Jace and Dedeker, how are you doing today? We are doing so good, and we're very excited because we have a special guest with us today. We have Luke, also known as your atheist pastor. Hello. Luke, introduce yourself. What's your deal? Yeah, who are you? My name is Luke and I am your atheist pastor. That's usually how I start. I mean, that's usually how I start it. What else do you, I mean, I don't know how, how deep you want me to go into this dive. Uh, <laughs> soup, it's like, soup, all right, here's the, here's the like 30 second elevator version. Uh, grew up as a Christian for 27 years of my life, was a pastor, wow. super involved with all things religious, and now I'm not. So I've been <laughs> uh, a, an atheist for about five years now. When you say you were a pastor, meaning like you went to seminary and all of that, any particular my bachelor's degree is in philosophy and religion. I have mm. a, I am 16 units shy of a 90 unit master of divinity. Wow. wow. Yeah. And I, uh, I was going to be a chaplain in the Navy at one time. That's wow. incredible. Yeah. If you ever thought about going back and just getting those 16 credits just so you can have the title and like put it on your business card that you're a master of divinity. Absolutely, one hundred percent, yes. And I've actually, <laughs> I've actually, uh, the only thing that's keeping me from doing it is a the money, right. uh, and mm. b I would want to go. I have these fantasies of going and meeting the dean of the school of theology and saying, "I know my final project is a philosophy of ministry paper, so I would like to my write my philosophy of ministry from the perspective of ministering to atheists and seeing how he would go with that." Uh, wow, interesting. Fascinating. That would be one, really huh. interesting. Yeah, one day it might happen. Yeah, I, I have no know. idea That's how that cool. would even so, work, but cool. Yeah. Me either. I have really no intriguing. clue like how that would happen. But you know, <laughs> yeah. So. Well, so for those of you listening, Luke is going to be joining us afterwards for some bonus content that our Patreon subscribers can enjoy. So we'll definitely have a chance to kind of pick Luke's brain a little bit more about all of those things a little bit later on. But before we do that, do y'all remember what happened last time we were all? here together gathered reading the bible well we started i'm Exodus. trying to remember it was something regarding moses <laughs> yeah yes and First, he you points for that okay uh we started gosh. at the beginning of his life as a little baby yeah, yeah. origin origin story of moses yeah little baby boy moses and then also like he was in a basket and he was a baby boy in the basket and then somebody <laughs> got him out and raised him like and he was kind of raised as a prince who got him out of the basket the prince or no the king's daughter yeah the pharaoh's so, daughter yeah yeah the yeah. pharaoh's daughter yeah yeah nice yeah okay and, and then so, yeah, he was now raised i'm as getting prince. mixed up with the prince of egypt that we watched <laughs> because you had said that like that didn't oh, did really you guys happen. watch that in our bonus well, episode. not all of it but part of I've it i've never seen it yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? I, oh, I only like I learned Exodus as a kid from Charlton Heston and the Ten Commandments. That was <laughs> oh, there that was go. where yeah we watched some clips it. from that too. Yes. We did a little bit of a comparison for our bonus content. Oh, um, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yes. Yeah, so Moses was raised as a prince of Egypt, but then something happened. Emily, there was kind of an inciting incident. Do you remember what that was? Do we need to give you some hints? Was uh, God like came to Moses and said that he's going to be the one to take the people out of egypt was he yeah. in the bush it was the bush yes <laughs> is that the bush <laughs> yeah that was the did bush it, did the bush happen <laughs> yeah you skipped over a few I things was like, but we, those okay, were the sorry. key moments the, you guys had been talking yeah, about yeah, the burning bush stuff, so sure. much that i was like has it happened or has the it burning not? bush is like a big deal like that's in the church world like that's a huge moment for moses like that's big right. time right yeah, and, and technically, it's... with what we're reading today, we're still we're the burning bush is still happening. Yeah. We're still in the middle of that conversation. Okay, okay, okay. You could say God yeah, is I... still speaking. Huh? 
Anyone oh. get my joke that I? Yeah, Luke, you got me. Go. No. Way to go! No, I don't. Way to go. I don't he get is it. still speaking. I don't get it. I've made this joke actually a number of times on this show, and every time I get blank <laughs> stares from Emily and Dedeker. Uh, oh man! Well, leave someone. You now won't get it from the former Pentecostal. Like, yeah, there you I, go. I, yeah. I, I get it. I'm with you on that one. Seriously, yeah. I no idea what you're saying, but okay. So that's cool. So what are we reading today now? So today we are reading Exodus chapters four through six. So More burning as, bushes. Yeah, as we mentioned, continuing with the burning bush and then moving on to after the burning bush. Right. And <laughs> yeah. what are we drinking? Well, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit hungover, which is a rarity for me. So I'm <laughs> I'm just drinking a Corona with lime because it seems I saw it, simple. It looked quite refreshing, actually. Yeah, which, it is. It is quite yeah. refreshing. It's it's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Uh, this is a a Hopomatic IPA oh. from Ritual Brewing Company here in the beautiful city of Redlands. Yum! That sounds great. Yeah, I love IPAs, so that sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm being a classy boy today and drinking a martini. Look uh, at that! Is it so shaken or stirred? Is shaken. Oh, of course it is. Because that's <laughs> that's how I make them. Because that's the way to do it. Because <laughs> okay. that's how real yeah, people make martinis. Sounds not good. <laughs> what yeah. about you, Em? Well, it, amazingly, in Shanghai, there's a place downstairs from where I live that has imported beers. So right now I'm doing this uh, vanilla peanut butter porter from Michigan, Ooh. it looks like. Saginaw wow. Tuck. Sagan Tuck? I don't know. But it's Saga, Saga, Tuck. Saga Tuck is usually how they pronounce that, I believe. Saga Tuck. Okay. It's my yeah, home it's state right there. Beer. Oh, oh really? well, there you go. Nice. Home state. Perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. It's so vanilla be... peanut butter porter, and it's badass. It's really good. Nice. All right. Well, now that we have our drinks and hope you do at home, we want to remind everybody to read responsibly and drink responsibly. And you can drink along with us with you if you wish, or you can listen to us in the car. But please do not do both at the same time. Moses answered, But behold, they will not believe me nor listen to my voice, for they will say, Yahweh has not appeared to you. Yahweh said to him, What is that in your hand? He said, A rod. He said, Throw it in on the ground. (laughs) I really like this, like, teenage Uh, Moses, just like, uh. (laughs) A rod. (laughs) Throw it on the ground. That's funny. (laughs) Wait, is this, is Moses a teenager at this point? No, he's like no, fifty he's... something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, okay, yeah. I was like, no, yet, he, no, he's not. But also in the Prince of Egypt, he looks pretty young. Yeah, yeah he's usually portrayed so... younger in this part of the story. Hollywood tends to portray him as like a young, sexy man for most of the yeah. story. Even Until Charlton he Heston too. Look, yes. really, he was yes. a good-looking guy. He was rather robust. Uh, yes. When when he was uh, when he was Moses. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, but quite dashing. Yes. Yeah. All right. He said, "Throw it on the ground." He threw it on the ground, uh, Emily, and it became I a just, snake. I just got to remind you. Last week, you were doing this really great "God as the Burning Bush" voice, oh, and man. you've kind of let that fall a little bit here. Fine. Um, you want me to? You want me to go back to my like deep God voice? I'll try please. to do that. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> He threw it on the ground and it became a snake and Moses ran away from it because Moses is like, (laughs) which is what I would have done. (laughs) I would have thrown up my hands and screamed and ran away from that thing and been like, God, is there is there any other way we can do this? Yeah, you know, for sure. I have some friends who have a pathological fear of snakes, so I get Mm. it. Like some people may not like the snake thing. I don't get it. I'm not like snakes themselves. I'm not afraid of. I've never had an issue with snakes, but I I agree if I. If I threw down a rod and it suddenly became a snake, I guess I could see myself being like, whoa. Well, <laughs> whoa, that was weird. Stay tuned for what happens next. Oh, okay, okay. So Yahweh said to Moses, put forth your hand and take it by the tail. So he put forth his hand and laid hold of it and it became a rod in his hand. Okay. So the snake was like writhing about and then he grabbed it by the tail and it became a rod again. That's cool. Yeah, That's exactly. a cool party a trick. trick, God. Because God okay. can do that stuff. Yeah, apparently. Uh, They may believe that Yahweh, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. 
Yahweh said furthermore to him, Now put your hand inside your cloak. He put his hand inside his cloak, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous, as white as snow. Yikes. Once again, why snakes and leprosy? Uh, I know. There are so many other ways to, like, show your dominance as a holy figure. I don't understand why leprosy was a go-to. Yeah, no, exactly. (laughs) Sweet stuff like like, what? Like what, Emily? Like, put your hand in your cloak, and here's a bird. You know, a sweet little (laughs) bird. Your hand is manicured. Look at how pretty. (laughs) (laughs) Well, like, think about the things that God, I mean, God is all powerful, right? So Moses could have reached in his cloak and pulled out anything. I mean, like an iPhone would have been cool. Like that would have really like set the stage. (laughs) That would have been been rad. But the only option here of the all powerful being is we have a snake and we have leprosy. leprosy. That's it. That's all I got. Well, there it is. (laughs) Yeah. He said, put your hand inside your cloak again. He put his hand inside his cloak again, and when he took it out of his cloak, behold, it had turned again as his other flesh, which I guess was like not leprosy flesh. His, his normal back flesh. to normal. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. It will happen if they will neither believe you nor listen to the voice of the first sign that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Will they, though? So if they're not convinced by snakes, they will definitely be convinced by temporary leprosy. Uh, no, okay. if they're not convinced by you telling them that your rod turned into a snake and then back, <laughs> then they'll definitely be convinced by you saying you stuck your hand in your cloak and it was... Was he supposed to go back and tell them, hey, guys, this is what happened? Or was he actually supposed to be like, check out my rod... Boom. Yeah. This is my snake I think he's peanut. Supposed to be, <laughs> I think he's supposed to be de- demonstrating. <laughs> yeah. Wait, he's supposed to go back be and show these telling. tricks to other people. Check this out. Here's some leprosy. And uh-huh. then, oh, and now it's gone. Here's a snake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And okay. now it's gone. Here's a snake with leprosy. I put it in my exactly. cloak and boom, it's a leprous <laughs> snake. Check that out. <laughs> so God yeah. is teaching that Moses be really intense. how to do these illusions. Is that... That one That's I'm how I read it. So God is okay. actually just like a magic teacher. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's an exactly. illusion, Michael. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. It will happen if they will not believe even these two signs, neither listen to your voice, that you shall take of the water of the river and pour it on the dry land. The water which you take out of the river will become blood on the dry land. Again, Whoa. gross shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Gross stuff. <laughs> really gross stuff. Snakes, Man. leprosy, blood. Uh-huh. Yes, exactly. Moses said to Yahweh, O Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before now nor since you have spoken to your servant, for I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. I always think about like, Charlton Heston's character in the Ten Commandments, mm. he was none of those things. Yeah, right. He was so eloquently Same thing in spoken. Of Egypt. Yeah, yeah. It's like, let my people, there was no stutter, nothing. Yeah. And so I wonder, like, if they just, I mean, imagine if you had cast a character that had to be slow of speech and slow of tongue, and that would have just right. made a terrible movie. It'd be sort of a King, yeah, no, King sure. Speech version of yes. Ten Commandments. Yeah, very oh. much so. That's the thing. I could that's, actually I think see that, that being definitely good. Definitely they could, yeah, they could switch it into a much more inspiring story. I could see winning like an Oscar for that angle. story. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. And what, like, Jeffrey Rush plays God and <laughs> and then, like, yeah, Colin Firth is Moses and he's stuttering. And Moses wow. is, like, having to take breaks to, like, swear a whole bunch in between. Exactly. <laughs> yep. uh, that'd be kind of fun. Oh, that would dear. be really fun. Okay. Uh, Yahweh said to him, who made man's mouth or who made... Who makes one mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Isn't it I, Yahweh? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall speak. He said, oh, Lord, please send someone else. <laughs> At least he's being honest well, now. Moses, so, like, Moses I gotta, is like, like, I'm not up for this task. No, this it's true. I feel like the first it. one is just an excuse of like just trying to be like, I like I really can't give speeches or deliver messages like i really yeah. got the wrong person now at least he's just like pl- just please okay please sorry just send somebody else please yeah exactly <laughs> the anger of oh man this is the first time i've i've literally read the bible in like four years oh and so it's, it's a whole different this is just this is phenomenal i love it uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> the anger of yahweh was kindled against moses and he said what about aaron oh oh no wait wait this is, god is this now. yeah this is god okay what about Aaron, Wait, your brother hold on. of the Levite? Wait, no, 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 sorry. No, this isn't. This is Moses still. 
Oh, no, 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 no this is God. This is God. Yeah, no, this is God. God. Yeah, this is God. God. Or Yahweh was pissed and said, and then says this okay. to, to Moses. Got it. Yes. Got what it. about Aaron, your brother, the Levite? I know that he can speak well. Also, behold, he comes forth to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth. I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what you shall do. I'm sorry. This, I don't, Jace, can you really quickly look up other translations? Because I don't remember God telling anybody that he was going to be with their mouth. mouth. I don't either. I don't either. That's the beauty of it. To be with your mouth? (laughs) Yeah. Can you just look? Okay. All right. I got to. Doesn't it always, while Jace is looking that up, doesn't it seem like God could just not choose Moses and choose Aaron instead? Because. Yes. He would already be good at the job. He could make Aaron's hand leprous. If he can do it to Moses, he can do it to Aaron. He could make Aaron's staff turn into a snake. Aaron could pour water on the ground. So why Moses? Just because of the basket thing? I don't know. Well, there's the basket thing. I don't, I don't know. know. But it, but it's like, but the Egyptians don't know who the heck Aaron is. They probably know who Moses Ooh, is. Ooh, that's a good point. Like, there's, good Moses point. actually has some sway, even though oh, that makes maybe sense. he's a little stuttery. Did you find it anything, It does make Jay? sense. Yeah, so the King James also says, I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth. Some of the other, like the Message Bible, I will be right there with you as you speak with him. And as he speaks, oh, teaching you step by step. Message. Yeah, classic message. <laughs> the total buddy God. <laughs> <laughs> that is buddy God. God's not that nice, though, in the Old Testament. I've learned that. No, he's not. No, he was not a happy camper. Yeah. No. Yeah. He liked well, to kill things leprosy and blood yeah. and, and snakes already yeah. yeah exactly a lot of the translations actually say i will be with your mouth and with his mouth yeah. wow well next wow. time we're All like right. doing a live show and like either of you are nervous i'm gonna be like you guys like yahweh is gonna be with your mouth don't and worry god is in your mouth <laughs> he is in your mouth <laughs> he's in there he's in there doing something i don't know what but he's in there okay he will be your spokesman to the people and it will happen that he will be to you a mouth and you will be to him as God. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. So wait a minute. Aaron Hold is going to do stuff. Aaron's yeah. going to be the spokesperson. Ah, uh, and Moses yeah. is just going to be like the figurehead. I, I suppose. And, and I guess the intermediary with God. Yeah. That's an okay. interesting. And I, well, I guess Moses phrase. is going to perform all the tricks. Like Moses is going to do the demonstrations. Aaron is going to be the hype man. Who I say. talks about them. Yeah. I say, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father in law, and said to him, Please let me go and return to my brothers who are in Egypt and see whether they are still alive. Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. Yahweh said to Moses in Midian, Go, return to Egypt, for all the men who sought your life are dead. Hmm. Jeez. Whoa. Is he, that, did, who did that? Like just like random people in general. Well, I think there was a there was alive? a time. There's a a pretty big time gap yeah, between when Moses left and then when oh. he came back. And so I know, like, there's thinking. And I again, this is a long time ago, so this could absolutely be wrong. But I think he was like mid to late, like kind of like early twenties when he left thereabouts. And then when he came back, there was kind of like everybody who had been looking for him was gone. So he was an older guy when he returned there's a lot of time in between yeah when he left and when he came back supposedly interesting wow all right moses took his wife and his sons and sent them on a donkey Just and he returned one donkey? to the land of egypt i know like all the sons and the wife <laughs> for, for everyone they're not large animals on <laughs> well, a maybe his wives donkey. and sons are, are very tiny though maybe mm. yeah. little tiny people they're like travel size it's a big exactly. donkey then Yeah, a huge, it's a Clydesdale, actually. So, (laughs) Moses took God's rod in his hands. (laughs) I'm sorry, Uh, everyone. Okay, everyone has to drink for that. Uh, Yeah, okay, all right. No problem. When we we laugh at middle school jokes, we have to Mm -hmm. drink. Was that a middle school joke? Yeah, I I don't know if I'd gotten that (laughs) in middle school, maybe in high school. All right. Okay. He always said to Moses, when you go back into Egypt, see that you do before Pharaoh all the wonders which I have put in your hand, but I will harden his heart and he will not let the people go. That deserves a pause for a second. Like that, that particular section 
has always and did always bother me. Like, again, it kind of goes back to like, why couldn't God have just chosen E or um, what's his name? Aaron. 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 Yeah. And it's the same thing of like, but I will harden his heart and he will not let my people go. And I mean, I, obviously, we don't want to get ahead of, of what the next few scenes are, but it just kind of seems like it's totally unnecessary for God to be like, yeah, I'm going to put the brakes on this, though, just so I can do more stuff. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, he just though, wants to like show up all powerfully is right <laughs> well and we established last time that for the like six generations or whatever that have gone by since joseph and his dream coat and then now god's been doing nothing but sipping martinis so now god's like okay now that i'm back i want to really like make this you know <laughs> i'm back from gotta, vacation so i'm gonna come back know, with a bang yeah i'm gonna reinvent yeah, exactly. myself again <laughs> oh man oh man okay all right you shall tell Pharaoh, thus says Yahweh, Israel is my son, my firstborn, and I have said to you, let my son go that he may serve me, and you have refused to let him go. Behold, I will kill your son, your firstborn. Whoa. Wait, is this Moses is going to do this to Pharaoh's son? God, yeah, God is telling Moses to say to Aaron, to say to Pharaoh oh my that gosh. he's going to threaten to kill Pharaoh's firstborn son. That as Yahweh vengeance. will. Cool, cool. Yahweh That's not will. convoluted at all. Okay. After Yahweh hardens Pharaoh's heart on purpose. Yes. Right. Wow. Yes. Okay. Just exactly. add that they couldn't part have simplified there. this plan just a little bit. Like just like, a little bit. Choose Aaron and don't harden Pharaoh's heart. Boom, we're in, we're out. Everybody's on their way in a caravan. <laughs> exactly. But no, no, no. We've got to do all this other shit. Okay. So it happened on the way at a lodging place that Yahweh met him and wanted to kill him. Wait, hang on. Met who? Met who? Met who? I don't know. That's I don't know. We, can we pull I'm, up another translation? Because yeah, I noticed this translation's bad at like reusing pronouns when it's not clear who who they're referring whoa. to. So wait, then is, Zipporah is he talking well, about Zipporah? Whoa, Zipporah whoa, whoa, is Moses' whoa. wife, right? Yeah, Zipporah yeah, is Zipporah wife. Is Moses's wife. You want to read that next verse, Emily? Maybe we yeah, can put it together. Yeah, I just looked ahead. Okay, here's the next verse. Then Zipporah took a flint and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet. <laughs> This is really awkward. Okay. <laughs> and she said, surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me. This is, Who is some this? Like, what really is happening? spooky horror well, film stuff. Well, so, yeah. so this covenant of circumcision is a big deal. And right. if, yes, we know. And be, right, right. <laughs> and because maybe, and I, I don't know because it doesn't say, but maybe because Moses was raised in Egypt, maybe they didn't he circumcise. Wasn't he cir it didn't circumcise his child anyway. Because oh. it said, cut off the foreskin of her son. So maybe as they were on their way, God was like, hold up a second. You're not circumcised. I'm going to kill you. And then for some reason, Moses' wife was like, well, let's cut off his foreskin and see what happens. Yeah. Old Testament wow. God. <laughs> so, yeah. Maybe. I mean, it kind of seems like that's what happened. All the other like, translations are skin. just uh, as confusing. Uh, uh. All the other translations yeah. just out of nowhere, either Yahweh or God or the Lord, depending on your translation, met Moses at the place where he was staying and sought to slay him, sought to kill him, tried this to is kill so him. I thought that he was like on his side. One said would have killed him, but and then oh. goes on uh, to what Emily just read about her cutting off the foreskin. So it seems like Zipporah saved them all with this foreskin offering. In all my years of pastoring and study, never ran across this verse until right well, now. Right? Well, yeah. Uh, there yeah. you go. Yes. Yeah, because they wouldn't. They yeah. wouldn't talk to you about this verse, would no. they? No. Because no. it really. How, how do you preach this? You know, God's going to kill <laughs> exactly. you, so cut off your exactly. foreskin. I mean, how do you? How do you do? I what really do you don't do know. I really line? don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. Dear. So you were. <laughs> We're going to yes. get even more into circumcision later in this, so I don't want to beat it to death. Right oh now, joy. So. So let's just cut it off right now. Yeah. Okay. yeah thank you. Good so, one. <laughs> so, okay. Surely you were a bridegroom of blood to me. So he let him alone. Then she said, you were a bridegroom of blood because of the circumcision. Yahweh Zippor said to like, Aaron. This just sounds like the most metal thing ever. So I'm going to keep saying it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yahweh said to Aaron, go into the wilderness to go into the wilderness to meet Moses. He went and met him on God's mountain and kissed him. Who is this? 
Aaron. Wait, Aaron. Moses is Aaron, Aaron and Moses be kissing each other. Okay. Yeah. Moses told Aaron all the words of Yahweh with which he had sent him and all the signs with which he had charged him. Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. Aaron spoke all the words which Yahweh had spoken to Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. The people believed. And when they heard that Yahweh had visited the children of Israel, that he had seen their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. It seems it was like that, that was easy. a successful venture. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, it seemed like it went pretty well. Because we haven't wow. we haven't even met Pharaoh yet. This is just yeah. the people. This is just the elders of Israel. Because you've got to convince these guys to get on board before anybody else right. jumps in. Yeah. Right. Well, right. it looks like we're about to meet Pharaoh, which is exciting. Yule Goodness, Brenner. Is it me? Yeah. yeah Yule, Brenner. Yule, Brenner. Shit. Yule Brenner is so attractive in the Ten Commandments. I just want to say he does look pretty studly in there for sure. Like, he really yeah. does. Even his fake ponytail that they like glued exactly. to his head. Yeah, yeah. And even though he's like really a jerk, there's just something about it. Something studly about well, that man. I'm expecting some go. good voices from you, Dedeker, in this chapter. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Take it away. Oh dear. Okay. Exodus chapter five. Afterward, Moses and Aaron came and said to Pharaoh, This is what Yahweh, the God of Israel, says. Let my people go, that they may hold Let a feast my... to me Can in the wilderness. Can we just pause for a second and clap for that? Like the big line is here. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Let my people go. That's, that's, well, a qu- that's the line. That is the line. Mean, the line. Them holding a feast to me in the wilderness that gets cut off in the song and in many of the movies. But, but right. still, we made it to the line. Pharaoh said, who is Yahweh that I should listen to his voice to let Israel go? I don't know Yahweh, and moreover, I will not let Israel go. <laughs> I don't Do know little, Yahweh. Kind of like a saucy, sassy boy. Pharaoh. Right. I don't, I don't know that fool. Who is that? Yeah, guy? exactly. <laughs> they said, "The God of the Hebrews has." I'm met not with hearing us. any voices here, Dedeker. I'm just saying. because wow, this is Moses wow. and Aaron. They're like the normal boys. They're like our normal, relatable boys. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> they said. The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to Yahweh, our God, lest he fall on us with pestilence or with the sword. So this is interesting. They're just asking, let us just go for three days. Give us a three day. Give us a three day weekend. Right. Give us a three day weekend. We're going to head out to the woods. We're going to go to the woods. We're going to dance around Uh some fire. Going to do some sacrifices. So that way we don't die of disease or get Mm. killed by swords. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Easy peasy. just give us a three-day head start, please. Okay. The king of Egypt said to them, Why do you, Moses and Aaron, take the people from their work? Get back to your burdens. I say, so Pharaoh's just like, I am too old to deal with this stuff. <laughs> well, it's also like, um, that puts him three days behind of whatever projects he's got them true. working totally, on. So that's totally, a, that's a pro- totally. It's a problem. You have an empire to run, lot. and you can't give your whole labor force a three-day weekend. Mm-mm. Okay, wait, I'm confused. So he says, get back to your burdens. Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land are now many, and you make them rest from their burdens. Yeah. The stop. same day. Yeah, stop demonstrating <laughs> and like asking for days off and shit like that. Yeah. Right. No, that's yeah. ridiculous. The same day, Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, You shall no longer give the people straw to make brick as before. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. The number oh. of bricks which they made before, you require from them. You shall not diminish anything of it, for they are idle. Therefore they cry, saying, let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let heavier work be laid on the men, that they may labor therein, and don't let them pay any attention to lying words. Like Pharaoh's like, they're being lazy, and they want to go worship their God, so let's make life a little bit harder for them. Yeah, Yeah, geez. That's not very nice. That's an iconic part of like that's I remember that part from I, like Yule Brenner saying like they will make bricks without straw. Yes. And everybody's and like, like bricks without straw. Everybody's like, no. Oh, my gosh. And then <laughs> and I'm really upset that the Bible never says, so let it be written. So let it be done. I know. Because right? he say says that, that phrase like that's like the et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Of yes. the Ten Commandments. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. All wow. right. The taskmasters of the people went out and their officers and they spoke to the people saying, this is what Pharaoh says. I will not give you straw. Go yourselves. Get straw where you can find it for nothing of your work shall be diminished. Jeez. So like, that's sorry, okay. guys. Sorry. Okay. So I, I guess I was always I always thought that it was like 
he was just giving them this straight up impossible task of like make bricks without straw, but it's just, no, we're not going to provide the straw. You still got to find the straw. Right. Well, Mm -hmm. and part of the problem too, is that like, theoretically the straw would have been gathered by someone and it wouldn't have been in the field. So now they had to go get straw. Like they had to go find like the leftovers, not like the bulk of whatever that harvest was, which Mm. is kind of like you add that, you know, let's say you spend your whole day making bricks. Well, now you've got to get up four hours earlier to go out into the field to to make some straw. I'd be really pissed at Moses. I'd be like, couldn't your staff do something about that? (laughs) Right. Yeah, this is your snake, bro. Your magical staff. (laughs) This is totally that thing where like the one guy in the regiment like doesn't clean his bunk and so everyone has to do push ups. So now all the other soldiers are gonna mess with that guy and be like, You better pull your weight. It's same thing here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be a massive blanket Mm -hmm. party going on if there wasn't uh anyway. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble for straw. The taskmasters were urgent, saying, fulfill your work quota daily, as when there was straw. (laughs) The officers of the children of Israel, whom Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten. So the officers were beaten and demanded, why haven't you fulfilled your quota both yesterday and today in making brick as before? Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried to Pharaoh, saying, why do you deal this way with your servants? No straw is given to your servants, and they tell us, make brick. And behold, your servants are beaten, but the fault is in your own people. But he said, you are idle. And again, he said, you are idle. (laughs) Therefore, you say, let us go and sacrifice to Yahweh. Go therefore now and work, for no straw shall be given to you, yet shall you deliver the same number of bricks. Okay, so there's just a lot of back I and forth. love that, that Pharaoh's only, <laughs> like, Pharaoh, the only thing that goes through Pharaoh's mind is, like, the only reason they want to go sacrifice to their god is that, that they're bored. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, or lazy, just trying to get out of work. Clearly the only reason these fools want to go worship because they're bored. So let's make life harder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Give them more to do. The officers of the children of Israel saw that they were in trouble when it was said, you shall not diminish anything from your daily quota of bricks. Just have to reiterate that for the third time in case any of you readers forgot. Okay. They met Moses and Aaron, who stood in the, in the way as they came forth from Pharaoh. They said to them, May Yahweh look at you and judge, because you have made us a stench to be abhorred in the eyes of, and I guess also the nose of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of his servants, to put a sword in their hand to kill us. Moses returned to Yahweh and said, Lord, why have you brought trouble on this people? Why is it that you have sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought trouble on this people. Neither have you delivered your people at all. Wow. I mean, that would be frustrating. I mean, so think about it. Like you go up, you find a bush that's burning, but isn't consumed. You see this God who can turn a a rod into a snake. Your hand was leprous at one time and now it's not. And then you do all these things you're supposed to do. And then nothing happens. Yeah. Like that would be the most frustrating. Just like I, 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 you just kind of throw up your hands. Like I don't know what to do about that. People are more pissed at you. Is God testing them? Like, what is it? Like, what? We what? don't know. Yeah. He, he's kind of, you know, he's mysterious is what they yeah. say. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, As people say, God works in mysterious ways. Right. Well, correct. But the, I feel like he in Exodus, he lays out a plan. He's like, this is my plan. You're going to do this. I'm going to make Pharaoh say no. And then I'm going to do other things to prove, like, I'm going to kill everybody's firstborn because he said that earlier. And it'll be good. But then nothing really goes according to plan. Like Moses yeah. didn't know that everybody would hate him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like God well, left out some of the do. fine print or Moses didn't pay attention <laughs> for those. Or he, he didn't really go into deep. He like, God was like more big picture. Right. And Broad didn't really, didn't really break it. Yeah, it didn't really break it down <laughs> into detail. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. And with that, Luke, can you read for us Exodus six? Exodus chapter six. Yahweh said to Moses, now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. Is that a good God voice? Is that? No, no, I like it. 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 I'm I'm worried. What is he going to (laughs) do? For by a strong hand, he shall let them go. And by a strong hand, he shall drive them out of his land. God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am Yahweh. And I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, Yahweh, I was not known to them. Oh, wait, that's okay. news to me. Yep. I yeah. didn't realize yep. that I didn't Yahweh, either. this is like Moses getting the inside scoop on God's His name. His real name? 
I guess. Also, in- interestingly enough, Yahweh, and this is one of the, the problematic things. I'm going to get theologically nerdy for a second, if that's okay. <laughs> Please. Go for it. So, Please do. In- interestingly enough, so this is kind of the first time that God announces himself as Yahweh. But when you mm. read through the earlier books of Genesis, when you see the capital L-O-R-D, Lord, that is Yahweh translated as Lord. So it yeah. is kind of weird how like the writers of Genesis knew this name Yahweh, but Yahweh doesn't announce Yahweh's self as Yahweh until Exodus. So that's kind of one of those. Um, I see. Does that make hmm. sense? Like, like was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's one of those weird things that makes people go like, huh. Uh, what, huh. uh, what's up with that? So, yeah, because anyway. yeah. the writers writing Genesis wrote it after all of these things had happened. And so they right. knew that name. But in the story, this is the first time that humans get given Yahweh as a name. And yeah. the other interesting thing is that there's two names for God in Genesis. So there's Elohim and there's Yahweh. Mm. And so those are kind of like, well, there's some discussion. Are we talking about two different gods is what was is judaism and is christianity and all these texts that use the bible are they as monotheistic as they say they are or are they mm-hmm. you know because even in genesis right. you guys probably read this and i don't know if you you touched yeah. on it or not but where a little where god bit, says yeah. let us let us make man in our own yeah. image and yep. how that's yeah. anyway sorry that's just a total <laughs> like that's that's your dinner table fact. Like, hey mom, nice. did you know that in Genesis God's given two names? Okay, anyway. I love it. Verse four. I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their travels in which they lived as aliens. Moreover, <laughs> I have heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. That's like three hundred years though. Yeah, like it. It took that long for God to be like, "Oh shit, yeah, I did make a deal with them, didn't?" That I? seems to happen a lot in the Old Testament. That God is like, "Oh, oh, oh, right. Oh, I remember oh, yeah. now." Oh, you know, lips. all those martinis—they addle your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Even my godly brain. <laughs> but I, have, I have those moments where I'm like, "Oh shit, I was going to call that guy back," you know. But it seems like <laughs> yeah, God's exactly. more like, "Oh yeah, they're not supposed to be slaves forever," you right. know? Because like, Whoops. I mean, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, but perhaps God works on this sort of stretched out time scale. So right, you forgetting because... to email someone back for a week is God forgetting the Israelites for 300 years, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Same. That's true. Man. We're talking yeah. like because full earth. Yeah, all the t- in all time scale. God is outside of time and space. Exactly. He he's yeah. not confined by human time frames. Far out. Wow, out. how existential. Yes. <laughs> Therefore, tell the children of Israel, I am Yahweh. And I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out. It's weird phrasing. Rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am Yahweh, your God, who brings you out. From under the, I feel like God might have gotten bored here. Who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians? I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will, I will give it to you for a heritage. I am Yahweh. <laughs> <laughs> the like, closing line is great. It's like when your friend, it's like when your drunk friend leaves you a voicemail at three in the morning. By the way, this this is John. <laughs> <laughs> this is Yahweh. Sorry, I took up so much space in your voicemail box. Hey, thanks, bye. <laughs> but it's okay. I, but hey, oh, sorry, maybe I, I don't. I guess I could text you, but I, I don't know. I've I've spoken already. So, and if you get this, just just you know, call me back. This is. This is Yahweh. Hey, Mo- Moses, Moses, I think I got cut off. Uh, yeah, so so this is Yahweh. Wow. Uh, wow. Oh, man. Beautifully written poetry. Oh, right there. gosh. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, verse 9. <laughs> Moses spoke so to the children of Israel, but they didn't listen to Moses for anguish of spirit. And for cruel bondage. Moses is like, here, let me, I'll put it on speakerphone. Just listen to the voicemail. Like, just listen to it. And they're like, this person is drunk. Like, we don't have time for this. This is a five minute voicemail. What is this? He kind of of rambles on, but you'll get it. (laughs) Yahweh spoke to Moses. Oh boy. Saying, go in 
speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, that he let the children of Israel go out of his land. Moses <laughs> spoke before Yahweh, saying, Behold. We tried that, wait, man. Oh, yeah, wait. You haven't done a Moses voice yet. What's your I Moses haven't. voice? I haven't. I'm trying to think of like what my Moses voice was going to be. Because uh, it would technically it would be more like, b- 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 uh, behold. Yeah. F- 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 but I can't do that the whole time. So, yeah. uh, behold, the children of Israel haven't listened to me. <laughs> how, 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 how then shall Pharaoh li- listen to me? Who I am of uncircumcised lip. There's that circumcision thing. Whoa, whoa, what are circumcised whoa. lips? Whoa. What? I have a disturbing that's... image of circumcised lips. Yeah, that's a lips. horrifying no. image. No, no, please no. Please no. Please no. But this is an interesting insight, though, because we were wondering about Moses' son, whether or not he was circumcised or like why he hadn't circumcised him. But now we know that Moses himself is not. At least he's saying but, here that he's not. But it, now, is that I'm, I'm uncircumcised lips? Like, because this is in context of Moses saying, "Why is Pharaoh going to listen to me? I am of uncircumcised lips." But I don't like. Does that mean that he's uncut, for lack of a better way to phrase it, or is I'm is, assuming, or or is he well, saying like, is that like a an analogy, like a biblical yeah, analogy, like, like a metaphor? Yeah, that, that's what I'm wondering too. Is, like, is he referring to actually being uncircumcised physically, or is he just referring to like the fact that like his mouth and his speech is Poor. somehow not blessed or not proper or not. I don't know. I'm grasping it at straws here. Uh, this is Dedeker. Which the, the Israelites, <laughs> the, the Israelites also grasped at straw earlier. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, it, so it all comes so, back around. Exactly. But, it, I mean, but uncircumcised lips doesn't make sense. Yeah. Okay. So, really so doesn't. this is interesting. I'm looking up other translations and this one's interesting because it varies pretty widely. So there's a number of them that say uncircumcised lips. There's one I saw that says, because I am unclean, but most of them, or maybe half of them, that the ones that don't say uncircumcised say something to the effect of that. Uh, the King won't listen to me either. I'm not a good speaker or hmm. okay. I don't speak very well, or with my faltering lips. Okay. I wonder if this is a translation issue. I wonder if, if, if a word used for being uncircumcised, meaning which could mean unclean or like less good somehow, is being used for his lips as well. Yeah, because if someone is uncircumcised, they would theoretically be unclean in right. the eyes of God. So it yeah. would make sense yeah. that they had unclean lips. Like that would uh, make sense. Oh, check this out. The Oxford Jewish Bible says, it just like says, uh, how then shall Pharaoh hear me who am of oral sephataim? And then in parentheses, oh. uncircumcised lips, stumbling speech, sealed lips, question mark. <laughs> So, so yeah, clearly there's a translation question here. I appreciate that it just puts a question mark straight into the text. So like that's useful. Well, because the cool thing is if you've ever talked to like any like rabbis or like Jewish clergy, they're totally fine with ambiguity. Mm-hmm. Like it, it really yeah. it really is like Christianity and evangelical Christianity specifically that's right. obsessed with being right. Like if you mm-hmm. talk to a rabbi, they're like, eh, we don't know. <laughs> like they're <laughs> good with, they're good with that. Yeah, Mm, that's a good point. Shall we continue? Yes, please. Uh, Yes, Yes, please. Verse 13. Yahweh spoke to Moses and to Aaron and gave them a charge to the children of Israel and to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. The oh no! Yep. Oh, here we yep. go. We gave these, it to you. Good luck. Is this is this why I had to read this genealogy? <laughs> yeah. I'm very pleased that you're doing it and not the, us. <laughs> Here's our drinking game for this because I don't think you've heard this yet. Our drinking I, game, anytime we have a genealogy, is anytime the people listening to it, or I guess the person reading it, laughs at a pronunciation, then we drink. Oh, crap. Yeah. All right. Here we go. <laughs> These are the heads of the father's houses. The son of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, Hanak and Palu, Hezron and Carmi. These are the families of Reuben, the sons of Simeon, Jemuel and Jamin, and Ohad and Jachin and Zohar and Shal, the son of a Canaanite woman. <laughs> oh. These are the families of Simeon. Ooh, a Canaanite. Just gotta throw wow. that in there. Wow. Like, this Girl, one's the son please. of a... 
Yeah. <laughs> this one's the son of a Canaanite <laughs> woman. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see if there's any sons of other things. Uh, let's see if the women and any other women are mentioned in this. That would be interesting. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. These are the names of the sons of, of Levi, not. according to their generations. Gershon and Kohath and Mary. Oh, I pronounce that. Mirari? Years... It's like Ferrari, but Mirari. Oh, Mirari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Ferrari, Mirari. The years of the life of Levi, I couldn't see that syllable, blurred vision, Ooh. were 137. It's a long time. 137. Yeah, Levi. Yeah. The sons of Gershon, wow. Libni, and Shimei, according to their families. The sons of Kohath, Amra, Amra, Amram, and Izhar. Amram, <laughs> <laughs> right, Amram. Yeah, Amram. that's good. Oh, that's Amram. how they named a mi- that's how they named a missile. Yeah, the Amram missile. There mm-hmm. it is. The son of Kohath. Somebody was drunk one night. What do we name our missile? Amram. That sounds good. Mm-hmm. And Izhar, the Hebron, and Uziel, and the years of the life of Kohath were one hundred and thirty three years. The sons of Merari, Machli, and Mushi. These are the families of the Levites according to their generations. Amram took Joshabed. His father's sister to himself as wife. Whoa. Wow. His aunt. Yikes. Okay. Whoa. Yikes. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. We got a and name she, of another woman, though. And she bore him Aaron and Moses. Oh. Oh. So Aaron's mom was Aaron's. So Moses and Aaron's mom was. Is their great is aunt? Their, is their grandpa's sister. Yeah. yeah. It was also their, their great, great aunt. aunt. Yeah. And, the, and their dad. Ew. Took their grandpa's. Mm, yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the years cool. of the life Keeping of Amram. in the family. Yep. And the years of Am- the life of Amram were 137 years. The sons of Izhar, Korah, and Nepheg, looks like nutmeg, and Zich- Zikri, <laughs> the sons of Uziel, Mishal, and Elzaphan, and Sithri. Aaron took Elisheba, the daughter of Aminadab, the sister of Nashan. As his wife, and she bore him Nab- Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithmar. Ithmar. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Emily, I think it's Aminadab, like a mini dab. It's just like you're just kind of half dabbing. It's just like a little. A mini dab. A little mini dab. <laughs> yeah. A little baby dab. <laughs> the sons of Korah, Asir and Elkanah, and Abisaph. These are the families. Of the Korahites. Eleazar, Aaron's son, took one of the daughters of Putiel as his wife, and she bore him Phineas. These are the heads of the father's house of the Levites, according to their family. These are that Aaron and Moses, to whom Yahweh said, Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt according to their hosts. <laughs> I love I love how conversational this got all of a sudden, where we've been super I formal know. and all of a sudden. We're like, these are the heads of their father's houses of the Levites, according to their families. These are that Aaron and Moses to whom Yahweh <laughs> said, bring out the children of Israel. <laughs> oh, wow. These are those who spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. These are that Moses and Aaron. <laughs> Just in case you missed in that. In case you didn't remember. In case <laughs> you didn't know. Now it happened. It's better. It happened on the day when Yahweh spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt that Yahweh spoke to Moses <laughs> saying, in fact... Why does the Bible need to reiterate itself so many times, though? I am Yahweh. Speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I speak to you. Moses said before Yahweh, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips. How shall Pharaoh listen to me? <laughs> Didn't we cover that already? Yes, we did. We, we so did. did. Wasn't we that, literally or wasn't, just that covered early? it. I feel like it's it's like there's a word quote and they're like, let's just add this in at the end. This is Yahweh uh, speaking. No, no. Okay, okay. Check it out, right? Because we took this side like detour to get the history. So imagine this on like a TV show or in a movie, right? <laughs> Where something happens, like this pivotal moment, I guess, which we just yeah, described. And then, it's like, and then it cuts to like a flashback do, 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 do. where you see like the generations of people leading up to this moment. And then you it's cut back to time. the scene by seeing that same line again to kind of oh. catch you back to where you left off. 
Okay, that makes sense. I think it's brilliant. Okay, brilliant writing. Yeah, so it's kind of like a last time. It's not brilliant writing. Chapter. Let's let's not get ahead of ourselves here. It is not brilliant (laughs) writing, but it's writing, and it's a way of inserting this in there. But it's ridiculous. Wow. Anyway, that's how I would cut the TV show episode of this. That was epic. Okay, well, to say the least, Luke, I'm sure you probably know, but. I'm going to toss the question out to Emily. Em, what do you think is going to happen next time? Like, what's Are the next part of this story? Finally? I know there's a, a parting of the seas and it's red. Is that mm-hmm. going to happen soon? Eventually. I don't think soon. You've seen <sighs> how we kind of tend to get bogged down in repetition and yes, voicemails. Yes, then there's probably going to be more repetition, like that. <laughs> more things going wrong, more God being like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, don't worry. But there, we're getting there. there. There's some really and then exciting eventually... stuff. Okay. Like, yeah. Like I'm bummed I won't be here for what's coming up because like well, there's some to come back. Again. There's some great stuff on its way. Alrighty. <laughs> well, All right. that was very epic and, and exciting. Oh my and gosh. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited to continue on with the story of Moses. Thank you so much for being here with us, Lou. We really appreciate oh, it. Oh, this is a blast. You have added a ton of color. <laughs> to this already colorful story. Well, thanks so, for having me. This was a ton of fun. Luke, before we go, can you tell people real quick where they can hear more of you? Oh, yeah. if you're interested in hearing more of me, uh, just get on whatever podcast platform you frequent and type in Your Atheist Pastor, and we should pop up. Or you can go to youratheistpastor.org and find out anything you want to know about us or follow us on Instagram, Your Atheist Pastor. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. And with that, see you next week. See you next week. Thank you for joining us for Bible study today. If you want even more drunk Bible study, including bonus episodes, new series, guest interviews, and more, become one of our patrons at patreon.com slash drunk Bible study. If you enjoy the show, take a moment to subscribe and then write us a nice review on iTunes or Stitcher, letting other people know what you like about it. Find us on Twitter at drunk Bible cast on Instagram at Drunk Bible Study, or send us an email to info at drunkbiblestudy.com. Drunk Bible Study is created and produced by Dedeker Winston, Jace Lindgren, and me, Emily Matlack. Our theme song is Book Club by Josh and Anand from their album, Home of the The The. The theme song for the book of Exodus is Our Story Begins by Kevin McLeod. For more information, visit us at drunkbiblestudy.com. 